Hi, and welcome to Unit 8, Lesson 4, Physical Science, and we're going to look at magnets and magnetism today. I'm going to show you first the digital lesson um, for magnets and magnetism, and then um, I'll show you a, a quick vocabulary uh, video clip. Um, I'll assign you study jams to take a look at and take a quiz, and then what the lessons for Thursday and Friday will be. But first, let's go ahead and look at Think Central uh, and the digital lesson. Boy, like this one. Have you ever seen a toy like this one? Kids used to play with this kind of toy a lot. Maybe you have played with a toy like this, too. Look at the poor guy. Let's call him Harry. Harry has lost all his facial hair. You can use the pen to give Harry a beard, a mustache, eyebrows, and eyelashes. Click the highlighted areas to learn more. The pen does not stick to the plastic. The magnet in the pen is attracted to a certain material only, and plastic is not it. When the pen gets close enough, the iron filings attach themselves to it. In this case, there is plastic between them, but the attraction is still there. If you move the pen, the filings follow. Look, a mustache! These are iron filings. Can you see them move a bit? They are in the pen's magnetic field. Welcome to the lesson, Magnets and Magnetism. In this lesson, you'll learn about the properties of magnets, different types of magnets, and how they are useful. The vocabulary words for this lesson are magnet, magnetic pole, magnetic force, and magnetic field. Have you ever seen colored lights like these in the night sky? This is an aurora, which occurs when charged particles from the sun are pulled into the atmosphere by Earth's magnetic field. Auroras are usually seen near Earth's north and south poles, but occasionally they can be seen farther away. The full magnetic field around Earth is the magnetosphere. It protects Earth from charged particles and produces the brilliant glows of auroras in the night sky. Have you ever played with magnets? If so, you'll have noticed that sometimes they pull toward each other and sometimes they push each other away. The pull and push are much stronger when the magnets are close than when they're far apart. Click the images to learn more about the properties of magnets. When you look at a magnet, all you see is a piece of metal. But there's much more to it than what you see. A magnet attracts iron and materials containing iron, as you can see by the iron filings at the end of this magnet. The iron filings are pulled and held to the magnet by magnetic force, which is a force caused by moving or spinning charges. A magnet exerts a magnetic force in all directions. The region where magnetic force is exerted and can be detected is called the magnetic field of the magnet. You cannot see the magnetic field, but you can see where the field exerts magnetic force on the iron filings. The filings follow the path of the magnetic field. Notice how the magnetic field lines bunch together at each end of the magnet. Note also that the iron filings are most attracted to the magnet's ends. The ends of the magnet are where the magnetic field is strongest and are called magnetic poles. Every magnet has two poles, which have opposite magnetic qualities. Where is the magnetic force strongest on a bar magnet? That's right! Bar magnets are strongest at the two magnetic poles. What do you think will happen when one of the poles of one magnet is placed against a pole of another magnet? Click play to find out. When opposite magnetic poles are placed close together, they attract each other. When similar or like magnetic poles are placed close together, repulsion occurs. Magnetic force can be either attractive or repulsive, just like the force between positive and negative electric charges. You've learned about some basic properties of magnets. 
Which of these statements describe properties of magnets? Click the correct choices. Not exactly. Excellent! All magnets have two opposite magnetic poles. The basic properties of magnets are that they have magnetic fields and magnetic poles, and that opposite poles attract while similar poles repel. Magnets can attract iron. That's right. Every magnet has a magnetic field, which is a region where magnetic force is exerted and can be detected. The basic properties of magnets are that they have magnetic fields and magnetic poles, and that opposite poles attract while similar poles repel. Magnets can attract iron. Recall that magnetic fields can be produced by the spinning of charged particles. How does this cause a magnet to form? Click each image to find out more about how magnetic fields are generated and what makes certain materials magnetic. At the atomic level, particles aren't tiny balls and they don't exactly spin, but they behave as if they were spinning charged spheres. The electrons and atoms have a property called spin that produces a magnetic field. The electrons in each atom give the atom a magnetic field as if each atom were an extremely tiny bar magnet. Are all substances magnetic? No. Elements such as copper and aluminum are not magnetic. Here's the main reason why. The magnetic fields of atoms in most substances don't line up in just one direction. So, for a large sample of the substance, these tiny magnetic fields mostly cancel each other out, causing the substance to be non-magnetic. For elements such as iron, nickel, or cobalt, atoms form groups called domains. The magnetic poles of atoms in a domain are lined up. The magnetic fields of different domains point in different directions, but if the magnetic fields of many domains line up, as they might in the presence of an external magnetic field, the substance will be magnetic. You've now learned about domains and how they make certain substances magnetic, such as iron, cobalt, and nickel. Now you're ready to see how domains are related to some of the properties of magnets. Click the dots on the line to find out more. The domains of a magnetic substance are not all lined up in the same direction, but most of them are, and they're lined up throughout the magnet. So, when a magnet is broken into two pieces, the result is two magnets. Because the atoms are grouped into domains, even the broken pieces of a magnet remain magnetic. If these pieces of the broken magnet are themselves magnets, shouldn't they have magnetic properties? You bet! As with the original magnet, the magnetic poles of the smaller magnets are at the ends. Notice how the iron filings are more concentrated at the magnet ends. That's because the magnetic force is strongest at the magnetic poles. Although each individual magnet piece acts like the large magnet, there are differences. The magnetic force of each piece is smaller than the magnetic force of the larger magnet. This is because the magnet pieces contain fewer domains. The size of a magnet affects its magnetic force, as indicated by the number of paper clips each magnet can lift. You've learned how the arrangement of atoms in a material determines the material's magnetic properties. Look at the pictures. Click the images that show magnetic materials. Excellent! The atoms in iron are grouped in domains, so their magnetic fields line up. This causes iron to be strongly magnetic. Very good! The atoms in nickel are grouped in domains. This causes their magnetic fields to line up, making it possible for the metal to be strongly magnetic. Some materials have atoms whose magnetic fields are lined up in groups called domains. Iron and nickel have atoms arranged in domains, but copper and aluminum do not. Materials with domains can be magnetic or become magnetic. To make a material magnetic, many of the domains must be lined up in the same direction.
Because magnetic materials are different, magnets are different. For example, some magnets have strong permanent fields, while other magnets have temporary fields. To learn more about different kinds of magnets, click the images. Most of the magnets you've seen are pieces of magnetized metal called ferromagnets. Ferromagnets have domains that line up in the presence of an external magnetic field. A fraction of these domains stay aligned after the external field is removed, so the metal stays magnetized. Iron, nickel, cobalt, and gadolinium are all ferromagnetic metals. Most magnetic materials are manufactured, but a few occur naturally. The most common of these is the iron compound called magnetite or lodestone. As molten magnetite cools, the domains line up with each other, giving the solid a strong magnetic field. Magnetite's ability to attract iron was known in both Greece and India over 2,500 years ago. Some materials retain strong magnetic fields for so long that they're actually called permanent magnets. Permanent magnets are harder to make than ferromagnets, but they keep their magnetic properties longer. The permanent magnets shown here are wrapped in red insulating tape. They're made of alnico, an alloy of aluminum, nickel, cobalt, and iron. Unlike permanent magnets, some materials can become weakly magnetized and so form temporary magnets. These materials can be magnetized by rubbing one pole of a magnet in one direction along the material. This aligns the magnetic domains. Eventually, the domains become scrambled again and the material loses its magnetic field. One form of temporary magnet is the electromagnet. In an electromagnet, electric current in a wire coil produces a magnetic field. The field is strengthened when the coil is wrapped around a core of iron or other material that is only temporarily magnetized. With a large current, the electromagnet generates a large temporary magnetic field so it can be used to lift very heavy metal objects. Did you know that the Earth is a giant magnet? Its magnetic field isn't caused by domains lining up in its interior. Instead, the motion of liquid iron and other materials generate a magnetic field that surrounds the planet. To learn how Earth and other planets produce magnetic fields, click play at the points along the bar. Like other objects in the solar system, Earth rotates. The imaginary line that it appears to rotate around is called its axis. The points on the planet where the axis would emerge and which rotate the least are Earth's geographical poles. Earth has two parts to its core. At the center of the planet there is a solid inner core. Surrounding this is a liquid outer core. Both cores are made mostly of iron. Because the temperature in the inner core is extremely high, the atoms move too vigorously to stay lined up in domains. Therefore, they cannot form a magnet. As Earth rotates, the liquid in the outer core moves with it, much as the water in a spinning bucket is dragged along. In addition, charges move in the core because of temperature differences and electrical forces. These factors cause the core to act like a rotating charged sphere that produces a magnetic field. The resulting magnetic field is much like the field that would be produced if a large coil carrying electric current were inside the Earth. This field has the same shape as the field produced by a bar magnet. Different magnets have different properties and uses. Drag each label to the image of a magnet that it best describes. You can click the images to find out more about them. I'll try my best on this. this again, if we were in class, you'd be able to go to the board and drag this. So doing it on the computer is making it a little challenging. But I think we might get it. All right, there we go. 
Well done. You've matched them all. A bar magnet is an example of a ferromagnet. Loudspeakers use permanent magnets to convert electrical signals to sound. A weakly magnetized metal nail that can still pick up magnetic materials is a temporary magnet. Magnetite is a naturally occurring magnetic mineral. Electromagnets are used in junkyards to lift heavy metal objects. Does a magnetic compass point to Earth's geographic North Pole? As it turns out, not quite. The geographic and magnetic poles on Earth are in slightly different locations. Click the images to learn more. Earth's geographical poles are the points where its axis of rotation intersects with its surface. These points depend only on Earth's rotation, so they remain in the same place. But Earth's magnetic field is produced by several different motions in the outer core. Earth's magnetic poles don't have to line up exactly with the geographical poles. In fact, the magnetic poles don't have to stay in the same place. Sometimes they drift. Often over long periods of time, they change directions. At present, the magnetic pole in Earth's northern hemisphere is about 11 degrees south of the geographic North Pole, near Ellesmere Island in northern Canada. But where will it be in 10 years? Before global positioning systems, or GPS, were invented, the difference between magnetic and geographic poles seriously affected navigation, especially when close to the poles. Navigators on aircraft and ships used maps marked with magnetic declination lines. The angle between these lines and longitude lines allowed them to correct their course. The confusion doesn't end with wandering magnetic poles that aren't at the geographic poles. When Earth's magnetic field was first studied over 400 years ago, no one knew about the two opposite magnetic poles. Not knowing that opposite poles attract, people called the end of a magnet that points northward the magnet's north pole. Now that we know about opposite magnetic poles, we can be more precise by calling the end of a magnet that points north a north-seeking pole. The north-seeking pole is attracted by an opposite south-seeking magnetic pole located near Earth's geographic north pole. Likewise, Earth's north-seeking magnetic pole is near the geographic south pole. Auroras form when charged particles from the Sun are directed by Earth's magnetic field toward its magnetic poles. The particles hit atoms in the upper atmosphere, causing them to give off light in many colors. The stronger the magnetic field, the more visible the aurora. Click the highlighted locations on Earth to see what the auroras there look like. Grand Teton National Park near Jackson, Wyoming is farther than Fairbanks from the magnetic pole in the north. It is closer to the magnetic pole than Baden-Baden, Germany. An aurora seen in northern Wyoming will tend to be less bright than the same aurora seen in central Alaska and brighter than when it is seen in southwestern Germany. Fairbanks, Alaska is fairly close to the magnetic pole in the north, so the magnetic field is stronger there than it is farther south. This stronger field pulls more charged particles in from the solar wind. More atoms in the atmosphere are struck by these particles and so emit more light. Auroras here tend to be fairly common and very bright. This aurora was seen near Baden-Baden, Germany. Although this city is farther north than Wyoming, it is farther away from the magnetic pole in the north. The magnetic field strength in Baden-Baden is therefore less than in Wyoming or central Alaska. An aurora viewed in Baden-Baden will tend to be dimmer than in the other two places. Let's see what you remember about the poles of Earth's magnetic field. Select the statements that correctly describe Earth's magnetic poles. Excellent! The poles of Earth's magnetic field are along a line that makes an angle of about 11 degrees with Earth's axis of rotation. 
That's right. The magnetic pole that's near Earth's southern geographic pole attracts the south-seeking end of a compass needle, so it's a north-seeking pole. You realize that the Earth's magnetic poles are about 11 degrees from the geographic pole and move over time. Both of these characteristics are due to the motion of the liquid outer core. The magnetic pole in the northern hemisphere is a south-seeking pole, and the magnetic pole in the southern hemisphere is a north-seeking pole. Why are certain materials magnetic while others are not? Use what you've learned about the magnetic properties of certain materials to answer this question. Type your response in the space provided. Click OK when you're done. Can I move to the next slide since you are unable to type into this lesson? How is Earth like a magnet? Select the statements that describe how Earth acts like a magnet. Absolutely. The presence of a magnetic field requires that there be two opposite poles. That's right. Earth has a magnetic field produced by the motion of its outer core. Good job! Earth has the magnetic properties of possessing a magnetic field with magnetic poles. This field is the result of the motion of Earth's liquid iron outer core and of the charges moving within that core. Earth's magnetic field is fairly strong and enduring, so it's not a temporary magnet. You've learned a lot about magnets and magnetism. Let's review the main ideas from the lesson. A magnet produces magnetic forces. These magnetic forces are strongest at the ends or magnetic poles of a magnet. Magnets have magnetic fields that surround them and provide the magnetic force. The magnetic fields are strongest at the magnetic poles. There are different types of magnets, each with different properties. Some types of magnets include ferromagnets, magnetite, electromagnets, temporary magnets, and permanent magnets. Earth's outer liquid core moves with the rotation of the Earth, but experiences other forces as well. The movement of charges in the core give rise to Earth's magnetic field, which has many of the properties of a bar magnet. The poles of Earth's magnetic field are at locations different from the geographic poles. The position of the magnetic poles and the strength of Earth's magnetic field affect where auroras are seen and how bright they are. Now that you've finished this lesson, if you wish, you can go back and review any part of the lesson again. All right, I'm going to show you this quick video from Vocabulary, again, about magnets. on earth the watching how a magnet do its magnetic work Einstein and Sir Isaac Newton felt the same way steady scratching their heads until the end of their days a scientist today are in the same boat ask one if she knows why a magnet works no it's a mystery it seems to me that even though we don't know why they work we can still check the scope magnets are everywhere in things we use every day look at the magnets on refrigerators okay there are electric locks using electric charge to keep the doors locked tight on our buildings, planes, and cars. Cranes lift vehicles way up off the floor. And the mag live high speed train that levitates. So don't forget about the compass always keeping you on course. Thanks to Earth's magnetism, yeah, that needle always pointing north. Electric motors, speakers, hard drives, and so much more is being magnetized. Operating while we debating how a magnet has its force. How a magnet has its force. Magnet has a magnetic field, a north and a south pole. Opposite poles, they attract and like poles, they repel. Magnet has a magnetic field, a north and a south pole. Opposite poles, they attract and like poles, they repel. In the world 
world of magnets, there are many different types. But before we get to that, let's say how they're alike. They are all made of metal. For example, iron, and they have a magnetic field. The south, you'll find it. It's the area around where they exert their force. But only on magnetic metals, of course. They attract, pull towards, or repel, push away. And all magnets have polarity. Polarity, which means they have a north and south pole. Huh. Opposite poles attract and similar poles repel. Okay, now how do they differ? They can be made from different metals like nickel. Some are natural and others are man-made. And if you heat those up, their magnetism fades. But a magnet made by Mother Earth, its magnetism is never not going to work. Uh. Magnet has a magnetic field, a north and a south pole. Opposite poles, they attract and like poles, they repel. Magnet has a magnetic field, a north and a south pole. Opposite poles, they attract and like poles, they repel. Okay, so you're finished watching this uh, video. We're almost finished. I'm going to ask you to go on to Study Jams and type in the word magnetism. Uh, watch the slideshow and then uh, take the test, the test yourself option here. On Thursday, you'll be assigned to complete this lesson that's in package three and again, refer to your learning plan. You'll complete magnetic attraction. You'll tell whether each pair of magnets will attract or repel. I'll show you the first three answers so you get an idea of what to do. On Friday, um, you'll complete the lesson titled The Force Be With You. And again, this is found in package three. I mean, sorry, packet, yes, packet three, The Force Be With You. So you'll complete this on Friday. Uh, I hope you have a great day. Again, after this, go on study jams, um, watch the slideshow, and take the quiz. I hope that um, you are all, again, just trying your best. And now we're, we're just taking one day at a time. If your parents have any questions, they can email me. I can respond um, through email, or I can call you. I will talk to you soon.